and welcome to this week's edition of The Lake Report. I'm Katie Sartoris, the local news editor at The Daily Commercial, and your host here on The Lake Report. We're glad to be back this week, but we've got lots of news to cover. Let's start with a truly amazing story. A 19-year-old woman who was abducted when she was six years old found her mom on Facebook. Now she's home in Lake County. Jacqueline Hernandez was kidnapped by her father in 2007 and taken to Mexico. This week, she told the Daily Commercial she knew in her heart that her mother, Angelica, would be on Facebook. After she and Angelica connected, law enforcement compared her fingerprints to those on file, and it was a match. Last week, Angelica traveled to Mexico and picked up her daughter. It was an emotional reunion, and now Jacqueline says she feels absolutely complete. The Lake County School Board recently changed its mask policy. After holding a series of meetings and taking input from parents, teachers, students, and other concerned citizens, the board unanimously adopted a targeted data-driven mask policy with parental opt-out options. The policy works like this. Should a school's COVID-19 positivity rate hit 5% or higher, teachers and students at that school will be required to wear masks for at least two weeks or until that number falls below 5%. For more information about the policy and the fiery debate surrounding it, go to dailycommercial.com. And there's some good news on the local coronavirus front. Hospitalizations have peaked and cases have dropped too, even in the schools, after a nationwide surge of the Delta variant. But experts still agree getting vaccinated is the best way to protect yourself from a severe bout with the coronavirus. In Lake County, 66% of people 12 and older are vaccinated. That number is even higher in Sumter County at 73%. If you haven't yet gotten your shot, the Florida Department of Health in Lake County is offering vaccines at three sites, one in Leesburg, one in Umatilla, and one in Claremont. Hours and other information can be found at vaccines.gov. Meanwhile, retail pharmacies including CVS, Walgreens, Publix, Walmart, and Winn-Dixie are offering vaccines. Check their websites for more details and stay safe out there. In our salute section this week, we featured Kevin McClelland, an Army veteran and local football legend, both on the field and on the sidelines as a coach. McClelland was an Army captain who commanded artillery batteries in the lower 48. And on the home front, he coached Eustis High School's football team. Thanks for your service, Kevin. The Lake County Commission this week approved its tentative budget and tax rate. The final vote will come on September 28th. To see what that means for your tax bill, visit dailycommercial.com. Of course, you'll find more news on our website and in the pages of The Daily Commercial. Don't touch that dial. When we come back, the city of Leesburg's mayor, John Christian, has some news from historic Pine Street. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Lake Report. I'm Katie Sartoris. If you have a story idea for an upcoming show, please shoot us an email at lakefront at leesburgflorida.gov. Also be sure to like and follow both Lakefront TV's and The Daily Commercial's Facebook pages. We're going to now turn things over to Leesburg Mayor John Christian. He has an exciting update on the revitalization of historic Pine Street. Good morning, this is Mayor John Christian, City of Leesburg. Today we're here to give an update on the Pine Street renovation revitalization project here in the city of Leesburg. Today we're talking about the new Leesburg Aquatic Center where they are cleaning up the site, preparing to open up for our very exciting um, Leesburg Aquatic Center. The slide is in, it's higher than, than many expected. It's gonna be a great addition to the city of Leesburg recreation and the quality of life for all Leesburg residents and those who come to visit our city. We also talk about on Monday night, the city of Leesburg approved 300 plus thousand dollars for design uh, Pine Street um, to design the road, to make it more conducive and safer for residents who travel Pine Street. Also, we approved the American Recovery Act money, the concept of $2.4 million to construct on the Pine Street renovation um, roadway so that the road will be expanded, there'll be on-site parking for the many businesses that are slated to come here on Pine Street. In partnership with the Community Development 
development corporation, uh, the community development corporation, they have the restaurant uh, that will soon be open with Cottom's Kitchen, also the lounge here uh, that, that is fully renovated and ready to go. You'll see many different activities here on Pine Street with comedy shows, jazz shows, dinner shows uh, for our residents who will have a place to come out and enjoy themselves. Even in the COVID-19 environment with CDC guidelines, we're going to make it safe for all of our residents. You'll see many buildings are already renovated, soon to be another restaurant here on Pine Street. So things are exciting here on Pine Street in Leesburg, and we invite you to come down in the coming months to see the great things that are happening in your, your city, the city of Leesburg. Wow, great news and such amazing growth. For more information about the great things happening in downtown Leesburg, check out leesburgflorida.gov. When we come back, an update on the arts here in Leesburg, coming up next. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of The Lake Report. I'm your host, Katie Sartoris. The City of Leesburg's Lakefront TV and The Daily Commercial are honored to bring you this weekly news magazine program. We're going to now turn things over to Leesburg Center for the Arts, Maria Stefanovic, for her monthly art update. Let's check it out. Hey everyone, my name is Maria Stefanovic. I'm the executive director here at the Leesburg Center for the Arts, and I'm standing in front of a really psychedelic cool art piece that you've probably seen a couple of times by a local Bobby Cooper and I'm sitting right in front of the eye so it's kind of cool and I'm here to give you an update of what's happening here in Leesburg in the arts world. So opening in the CFA gallery in September is Convergence. It is a psychedelic art show with two artists Arnold Drake and Ray Grand. Really cool work. One is kind of black light inspired and the other is a little augmented reality. So I hope you can come out and see it. Open September 3rd and runs all the way until October. The opening for the show is October 8th, Friday. It's the second Friday in October. Come on out, it starts at 5.30. Show number two, doesn't mean it's second in line, it's just our second show, is at CFA Plaza. It's Plaza Lincoln, so it's on 441, the Lincoln dealership. Really cool, it's Lumps, a family portrait by local Eustace Bay's artist, Kelly Batston, and it opens September 16th, 5.30, be there, be a fun time. 30% um, of the proceeds from the gallery art sales from both galleries benefit the Leesburg Center for the Arts. So remember that, put, store that, and you're kind of doing something good at the same time, buying art, supporting an artist, supporting your local art center, art scene. Our storefront art project, which is in downtown Leesburg, opens up September 15th. We'll have five new artists displaying work throughout downtown to follow up with more information of where they're located, who they are, and what's for sale. Check out our website, leesburgarts.com backslash storefront art. October 1st will be here before you know it, and that is debuting our Art Walk. So every first Friday of the month from October to May in downtown Leesburg, starting at six o'clock, artists will be lined up on the sidewalks and we're repairing them with local merchants all your restaurants your bars um, even some of the shops will be open late so come on down from six to nine on the first friday of every month starting in october we have two programs happening in the gallery in the month of september on a weekly basis so monday every monday at 6 30 we have yoga in the gallery with kelly and reagan she gets here you guys will have a great time of decompressing the Monday woes and just chilling out. So every Monday, 6.30, and then on Fridays, Coffee and Combo is back. It's in the gallery, it's always got a creative subject, fun, it's a great way of spending your lunch hour just to kind of get in the zone of something artsy, something creative. So we've got some new programs happening. We've got Art University, we've rebranded as Art U. Art U is a hands-on, in-depth, art program for kids ages 9 through 14 happening every Wednesday here at 3.30. We have registration fee, so for more information you go to our website which is leesburgarts.com, go under kids programs and read up on it. You can register, there's scholarships available, it's a really great program. Followed by something new, this is very new for us. So Holly Redfeather will be coming here twice a month to offer something that's a little different. It's the journey of self-awareness. 
So it's a combination of drumming, meditation, mindfulness. That starts September 22nd. I had to do it on my cheat sheet. <laughs> September 22nd, followed by our normal programming, which is Art Talk with Michelle Bergeron, September 23rd. And so for more information on any of the programs, special events, regular art events, check out leesburgarts.com or you can follow us on Facebook, Leesburg Center for the Arts, or Instagram, Leesburg underscore arts. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Maria, for that update. For more information, be sure to check out leesburgarts.com. And now for an update on our historic community theater, The Melon Patch. Executive Director Dustin Levine joins us with some news on their latest production. Hi, I'm Dustin Levine and I welcome you to the Melon Patch Players. This season we have really tried to change up the game a bit, do some new things, some different shows, and do some original work, which I'm really excited to share with you our next play coming up, which is Overdue Bills. This show is not only an original work that has never been seen on stage, but here is the director and the writer of the show, Tom Klein. And I really want to give him a moment to talk about what this show means to him and why he created it and why it's something you want to see. Thanks, Dustin. Um, I want to say how grateful, one, I am that I get the opportunity to do this show. It is really personal to me. Um, this show is called Overdue Bills, and it's an homage to my father-in-law, who's no longer with us. Um, he was an ex-military guy who stayed with us for a while, was had like one leg in dementia, but he would sit and tell me stories of when he was younger. And I came up with the idea of the show where the, his grandson is trapped in, in the house with him for the summer. And it really is a story about how we pass knowledge and wisdom on from generation to generation. And in the show, everybody in the show, it's a family. The grandfather's name is Bill. And he, in his mind, is overdue. He should have died a long time ago. Everybody he knows is gone. The grandson is grounded for the entire summer because he lost some library books at school. And the parents had to pay for them. Uh, the parents are, their overdue bills are money. They just don't have it. They've overextended on this house because they want grandpa to live with them and, and have a place where they can keep an eye on him and help him. And they have an older daughter uh, named Elizabeth who her overdue bill is uh, her time of the month didn't come. <laughs> it was overdue. So everybody in it has something that's a problem for them. Uh, and it's, it's really, uh, it's also set in 1984. And I did that specifically because in 1984, if you were grounded, um, you didn't have a computer in the house. You didn't have for a lot of people, they didn't have cable TV. There wasn't VCRs yet. So if you were trapped in, you were trapped in the house. It was your prison. And I, I went to that time period also because the music, there's a lot of 1984 music that we sort of, in between scenes, there'll be little snippets of, but the music in 1984 was amazing. I mean, it was Prince, it was Hall and Oates, it was- I'll give you that. Yeah, I mean, every bit of that music was iconic and, uh, it's just nostalgic. So Tom, I wanna to know what you hope people will get out of this show when they come to see it. I'm hopeful that people come and they're brought back to that time period in their lives to a degree, but I'm also hopeful that the story itself, um, I think it's, it's funny, but I think it's really touching too. And it has its dramatic moments. Uh, I'm hopeful that it'll bring a tear to their eye. Um, I'm just, I'm really hopeful that people will come out and watch it. Um, I think it's the best thing I've ever written, and, and this is like the fifth play that I've written that will be done. So, I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tom, for being here with us today. One thing that we really love to do with the Melon Patch is bring you new and innovative things. We've got a great season lineup. For more information, please visit melonpatchplayers.org or call us at 352-787. 3013. And we are so excited to invite you to what's growing at the patch. The Melon Patch has an amazing lineup of productions for the fall and winter. 
log on to melonpatchplayers.org for the full schedule. Also coming up September 26th and 27th, the Melon Patch is hosting auditions for a Christmas carol. Sounds like a lot of fun. Meditation workshops, big trucks, and more. When we come back, we've got an update on all the happenings taking place at the Leesburg Public Library. Welcome back to the Lake Report. You know the Leesburg Public Library has much more than just books. They have an amazing lineup of activities for kids of all ages. We're going now to turn things over to Deb Bussinger for this month's Leesburg Public Library update. Oh hey, this is Deb Bussinger from the Leesburg Public Library and I wanted to let you know about a brand new program, Meditation in the Garden. It's happening every Thursday from 5 o'clock to 5.45 and in partnership with Beacon College. We are offering beginner level meditation. All levels are encouraged to come and first timers especially are encouraged to come. So remember meditation in the garden at the library, Thursdays, five o'clock to 545. Another garden event is Therapy Art in the Garden presented by Artists with a Purpose. So this is a two part workshop on Wednesdays, September 8th and the 15th from one o'clock to 2.30 p.m. This class takes place in the children's garden, which is fully shaded. Registration is required. Please call or email the library. Also outside, we have Read to the Paws Therapy Dogs in the children's garden. This is for all ages, happening every first Thursday of the month at 3 o'clock. The next session is October 7th. Enjoy the fresh air, a book, and a happy and loving listener. We have several virtual programs coming up in the month of September. Chair yoga on Mondays from 4 to 5 o'clock and that's a live session. Tai Chi live classes on Thursdays from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock a.m. beginning on September 23rd. And the very popular Florida History Lecture Series continues with Lou Vickers presenting Cypress Gardens, America's Tropical Wonderland on Thursday, September 16th at 1 o'clock p.m. There's more, and just remember that registration is required for all virtual programs so that you can get the Zoom link. A few things coming up in October that are exciting. The Big Truck Touch event is coming back on October 19th at 10 o'clock in the morning. This is a very popular event and you will hear more coming soon. Trick or Treat Drop-In of course will happen beginning in October so stay tuned. Make sure to check out all the great events happening at the library through looking at our website, our Facebook page, our Instagram page, and receiving our weekly e-news. If you're not receiving that email every Saturday morning, then send us an email and we'll get you on that contact list. Stay tuned for great things coming up and we'll see you soon. Great stuff. Thanks, Deb. Be sure to check out leesburgflorida.gov forward slash library or their Facebook page for more detailed information about upcoming events. Well, that's all the time we have left. We hope you enjoyed today's show. To catch it again, log on to Lakefront TV's YouTube channel you can watch previous episodes there too. Until next time, we encourage you to get outdoors and explore this beautiful place we call home. We'll see you next time.